Hey guys, it's Janie, and welcome back to WTF. I know that we've been gone for a little bit longer than we expected this month, so I wanted to give you a quick update on what's happening here in the test kitchen. So unfortunately, the longer than break is due to some stuff happening in my personal life. Uh, I've had to take some time away in order to care for my mom, who uh, unfortunately has been uh, very sick with cancer. So we thought that we were gonna lose her this month, and uh, I just decided to take some personal time to just care for her full time. So as of this recording, uh, fortunately she is still with us and we'll see how it goes, but you know, please, if you'd like to send your thoughts to her, I'm sure she would appreciate it. And I also wanted to let you know that during this time, um, you know, Ben and I talked and unfortunately, while we really enjoy working with each other personally, we found that the situation, it just wasn't a good fit for us. So Ben is no longer with Modernist Pantry, but we wish him the best on all his future endeavors. He truly is a great guy, and uh, it was really fun having him around. So I am excited, however, that this episode and our future episodes are going to have Hannah as our new co-host. So I'm really excited for you guys to see what she's been doing. All right, so that's a short and sweet intro. Now let's just get on with WTF. Today on WTF, we are showing you three easy techniques for coating your gummies for shelf life using carnauba wax, citric acid and sugar, and cornstarch. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we help you transform food here in your kitchen. I'm Janie, and today with me is our new co-host on the show, Hannah. And we are very excited to talk to you all about how do you coat your gummies for shelf life. But first, I want to give Hannah an opportunity to introduce herself to you because we've been working with her for the past month. She's been fantastic, and I'm really excited to be here with her. All right. Anna, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit mm -hmm. and ask you to talk about yourself. Yes. So I went to Johnston and Wales University in Providence, Rhode Island, which is a culinary school here in New England. Um, while I was there, I studied dietetics and nutrition, mm -hmm. which is a great combination um, between science and cooking. If you like those two things, it is a great degree to get. Um, so after I was there, well, while I was there really, I've been working in all sorts of cooking positions from being a line cook at a sandwich shop all the way up to working in fine dining restaurants as their garmage and their pastry chef. So I've really seen it all between catering, being slammed on a line and getting to plate very fancy dishes. Um, and before I was here at Modernist Pantry, I was a private chef back in my hometown working for families. I would cook anywhere from little family gatherings all the way up to catering parties of about 30 people, which really gave me some good discipline and knowledge on how to plan a menu, create it, execute it, all of that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And lucky enough, I'm now here at Modernist Pantry and adding a whole new knowledge to what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. And just excited to see where this takes me. Yeah, so what I really love about Hannah is that she is super curious about mm -hmm. why <laughs> things work. And we talk a lot about, you know, like, okay, why are we doing this? Let's adjust the ratios on some of our tests. Why are we adjusting the ratios? So I really love that she's bringing this kind of new level of curiosity to the test kitchen, of course, and the dietitian stuff mm -hmm. I love because mm -hmm. it's kind of, now we're starting to have some conversations about nutrition, which is, Traditionally, not like a huge focus for WTF, but now it's going to be part of our research mm -hmm. and development as well. So I'm really excited to you know, see what we're going to come up with. Yeah. But to, for today, we're going to dive right mm -hmm. into how do you coat gummies. And this is a huge request from a lot of people. We've done a lot of episodes around how do you make different types of gummies. And if you're curious about that, you can click on the link in the description below. So that's going to link to our free online gummy course. So you don't need to log in, payments, anything. It basically just walks you step by step through how do you make gelatin gummies, pectin gummies, etc. And today we're talking specifically about gelatin gummies, mm -hmm. which people call in and they have problems because they make a great batch and then it gets sticky over time mm -hmm. and it doesn't taste as good. And the reason for that is because the sugar in the gummies is drawing out moisture from the air. 
So what we want to do is to be able to create a barrier between the air and our gummies to make sure that you can have them for longer, you know, weeks, months, etc. Um, so in order to do that, we're actually going to walk through three different ways in order for you to coat gummies. So we're doing carnauba wax, we're mm -hmm. doing citric acid and sugar, and we're doing cornstarch. Let's start first with the carnauba wax. So that's new to Modernist Pantry. Um, we just got some in. You can find that on our store. But let's first talk about um, carnauba wax and how do you use it in order to coat gummies? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So I think first to note on carnauba wax is it is a very hard wax mm -hmm. in general. So it's usually going to come in flake form. Mm -hmm. um, with trial and error, I went ahead and melted straight carnauba wax, which was a big mistake, and it turned into this hard block, couldn't work with it, wouldn't cover the gummies at all, wasn't doing what I wanted. So we learned that you do 5% of carnauba wax to whatever neutral oil you're looking to do. Today, we're gonna use canola oil, but if you wanted to use vegetable oil, mm -hmm. anything like that, that's just fine. So yeah. we're gonna start with just 100 grams of oil. Of course, you can do more or less with how many gummies Mm -hmm. you have. Yep. So, and what's kind of cool about carnauba wax is that people may have already heard about it because it's used in like waxing cars and stuff. Of course, if you are uh, purchasing carnauba wax for food, you want to make sure it's food grade as always. So, of yes. course, all of ours is food grade, but if you're like, I'm going to try to pick it up locally or whatever, uh, make sure it's food grade. Yes. Yeah. And once the oil's heated, we're just going to sprinkle uh, the wax right on top. It melts really fast, so give it about a minute or so, and the wax should be fully dissolved. Okay, so we're not bringing this up to a boil or anything like no, that? No. it. I have this on about 160 right now, and that'll melt this just fine. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we have our carnauba wax fully melted into the oil. And we're just going to place this in a bowl. And you're going to want to let this cool down a bit um, if you stick it in the fridge for about 5-15 minutes. It's going to cool down to about this color and this is when you know it's good to use. Okay, so kind of like almost semi-solid. Yes, because okay. if we went ahead and dipped the gummies in the hot wax, it's going to melt mm -hmm. the gummies, the gelatin in it, so just be careful of the heat. Yes, because remember if you're working with gelatin gummies and melts at body temp, so you want to make sure it is below that mm -hmm. before you apply wax. Yes. <laughs> okay. So what do we do then? So for carnauba wax, a little bit goes a long ways, so you really only need a pinch. And I would recommend using some type of gloves, um, mm -hmm. just so you don't get wax all over your hands. Yep. But and also if you're selling things for, for retail, yes. you definitely want it to be sanitary. So we're really just going to take a little pinch. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see, it kind of looks, it looks solid, but it's still viscous, still can run. So we're really just going to rub this on our hands mm -hmm. and coat your palms. And then we can just go ahead, pick up a gummy, and you're just going to gently massage. Okay, so you're not looking to like, you know, there's, it's not like a thick layer of wax on there. No, okay. yeah. So once we, and it'll give a good bite. Mm -hmm. Once it solidifies a little bit onto the gummy itself, you can, of course, speed this process up by sticking it in the fridge for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so for commercial companies where they're doing this in huge batches, they have tumblers where mm -hmm. they can do like hundreds and thousands at a time. Yes. If you're doing them in a small mm -hmm. batch, you can do them individually, as Hannah's doing, or um, on some websites they do sell like small tumblers that you can try. Maybe the, the same type that they use for popcorn might work. We haven't done that ourselves, but obviously if you're trying to do a couple hundred at home and you're like, this seems like it's going to yeah. take me a while, you can certainly look into that option as well. And then over here, we do have some that are already coated. So I kind of just want to pick one up and show that to you because we made these about, I want to say two weeks ago, so mm -hmm. they're not fresh. They're not like freshly made. Yep. And you can kind of see it's still coated. You know, there's no moisture on the outside. It feels really nice. You can kind of break into it. You know, it's still stretchy. It's still a gummy. I'm not going to eat it only because we made these for testing and they're unflavored. So yes. it's not going to taste very good, but it looks absolutely fantastic. So 
that is the first method. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to quickly reshift the table around, and then we want to show you the citric acid and sugar blend as well. Okay. So the next technique we're going to be doing today is a citric acid and sugar coating. This is going to give you a similar taste to, say, a Sour Patch Kid. And in our, our recommended ratio is a four to one, four parts sugar to one part citric acid. Of course, if you want a more sour gummy, you could do three parts mm -hmm. to one, or if you really want to dull down the sour, you can bring it to about half, or I mean, like a fifth or sixth. Mm -hmm. The ratio is really up to you. Yeah, but I would think that you don't want it to be too sour or too sweet, so we, we find that this four to one is a nice, it's a balanced good. gummy. Yes, so we're just gonna give that a good mix up, and this one is really simple. All we're doing is just placing our gummies right into the mix. Do a few at a time if you'd like, and just shaking them up, making sure they're getting completely coated in there. Mm -hmm. And I kind of think this one's really interesting because, you know, the reason why we're coating them in the first place was because the sugar in the gummy, it was pulling out the moisture from the air. So I was like, well, why doesn't the sugar in the gummy or the sugar coating the gummy pull the mm -hmm. moisture? And I think the way it works is that the acid and the sugar ends up creating a barrier so that the sugar on the outside is pulling moisture from the air, but the mm -hmm. sugar inside the gummy actually then becomes uh, protected. So it's kind of it's kind of cool. Yeah. So I like that. And oh, also we used citric acid in here, right? Yes. Okay. If you don't have citric acid, you can use other culinary acids like uh, malic or tartaric. We find that citric, I think, has the best flavor of mm -hmm. them all. But if you're like, I don't have citric on hand, but I have the other two, um, I would I would go with that. I don't know if I would recommend like an ascorbic acid or something that's like super tart. So you kind of want want a milder acid. Yeah. And, and those look great as well. Yes, and yep. I will say these are the most delicious, in my opinion, out of all of the coatings. Yeah. So you can have this, you can see this one again, we made this about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. They're completely dry, no problems at all. All right, all right. and last but certainly not least, we do want to go over how do you do a cornstarch coating, the most basic of the coatings. Yep. So I'm just going to move this right here for yeah. Hannah and give her what she needs. All right, what are we doing on the very last set of of gummies. So for our cornstarch gummies, it's going to be pretty similar to what we were just doing with the uh, citric acid and sugar. You're really just going to place your gummies right into the bowl of cornstarch. Mm -hmm. And again, we're going to swirl it around. But in this step, I think it's important to shake off any extra cornstarch that might be on there. It does have a squeaky texture. Mm -hmm. so best to get rid of any excess that you yeah. don't need. So the interesting thing about the cornstarch method is that I think for us it's the least favorite for home because it, you, you do get that kind of cornstarch taste on your mouth and mm -hmm. I personally don't really love that so I like the wax method, I like the citric acid and sugar method a lot, um, but for commercially a lot of times they will actually make all their entire molds out of cornstarch which makes the demolding process very easy. But of course that's for you know people who are making like mm -hmm. millions of, of uh, gummies at a time and you know they can do that kind of custom molding that we do not have access to. So hopefully what we've shown you today is how easy it is to coat your gummies to make them last longer. You can find these techniques in the links in the description below as well as access to our entire gummy course uh, free of charge. And enjoy, let us know in the comments below if there's anything else you would like us to do with candies or gummies because we are currently planning out our, uh, I would say our late spring and summer schedules. So from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie. And I'm Hannah. 